Welcome to Jiminism Total Notary Channel. You should be most welcome back to From the Depth. Today we will look at something called the Citadel or All or Nothing Armor Theory and a little bit on how to make a hull in From the Depth. So it's basically a hull tutorial. Now my armor tutorial is quite extensive and I still think it's pretty valuable to understand a little bit how the game works. However, there is one big change here. Like before, you could stack multiple layers of armor like this, but now you can only stack one layer of armor behind. So you can only have two layers of armor to actually get a bonus from the layers behind it. And of course it's valuable to have even more layers and of course um, recommended slash mandatory <laughs> um, yeah uh, if you have like thicker bigger ships but uh, you'll only actually get a armor class bonus from a block behind it so we should take a little look on that and um, we'll build a little ship so how can we do this well it's uh, pretty easy we're going to build a ship hull for a I haven't decided if it's going to be an airship or if it's going to be a naval ship yet, but uh, yeah, there, there you'll have it. That's exactly what we're going to do. Um, and um, you can have some different type of, of layers in a ship. Like um, the reinforced decking is somewhere between normal uh, metal and uh, wood. So wood has armor of 8, metal has armor of um, 40. You can see the health there, and the health is kind of a little bit between, the armor is kind of a little bit in between, like that. So that's a kind of an interesting mix. Um, if we look at stone, so reinforced wood now has uh, more armor than... I th I'm not sure if it did, but it has more armor and less weight than wood. Um, it does, however, not have as much uh, health. But it's just a little less health. Actually, I think it looks a lot like um, there is very little reason to use stone anymore. Yeah, probably. Let's see the cost though. Two, three. Alright, stone is a little bit cheaper um, than reinforced wood. Okay, okay, stone still has its uses. It's uh, for soaking up, you know, um, damage. But we're going to build a simple hull um, using the Citadel theory. And while I'm not sure this is going to be a airship or not, we're probably going to do this with um, lightweight alloy, which has better health and better armor and very little weight. So re you know, this is some some real good stuff, and we're just going to have internal um, plate, or so to say, out of this material. Now this will not be a big ship, um, we're going to work on the internals of it uh, and the stuff like that in a future little video, but it's going to be a pretty high ship, so that's for sure. Alright, so when you build a hull you want to have it kind of uh, aerodynamic. Um, and of course, the pointier the better, but uh, you also have to think about how you want your ship to look. Um, and, you know, there are different ways to build them from the depth. You can mostly focus on the aesthetics or you can mostly focus on the function. Um, now, the base plate of a ship, which is kind of the plate where you put your uh, important stuff on, should not be your utmost bottom plate. Because if you have it the utmost bottom plate, um, you will be easily killed by turrets or shots or something from behind. Or, or below, I mean. If you have torpedoes or shots or missiles coming up from below your ship, not behind, below, um, it will kind of kill you very easily. So it shouldn't be the utmost bottom plate. Kind of makes sense. Right, so let's take a little look at uh, layers here. 
there are different types of blocks here and we could theoretically just armor the shit out of this entire ship and it would be super heavy and pretty strong. Uh, but there is something called the citadel uh, theory where you kind of armor the most important parts of the ship much more than anything else. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to have a small compartment where we'll keep our most precious things. Uh, so basically, yeah, I can just show you like an example. If this were a ship like this, a naval ship, we would perhaps have a little bit lighter armor. So we'll have, you know, something like this all around the ship like that. And then would have a little citadel where we would keep our most important parts. And we could, um, if we're very serious, build this out of heavy armor. So we'll just have this little core inside the ship out of heavy armor that at least have heavy armors uh, against the side where we're most likely to encounter enemies. Whoops. All right. Right, uh, that was some kind of error, whatever. Um, it didn't crash the game, which is one good thing. Okay, so we're just gonna remove this and we are going to build on our actual hull because we're going to look a little bit at different types of blocks. Um, now, I will have this little plate. Um, normally, I'd place one or two blocks below this ship as uh, kind of spacing for uh, soaking up some torpedo damage or even more perhaps because on ships you're most unlikely to get shot from behind so it's smartest to have your ammo barrels uh, kind of along the bottom of the ship a little spaced apart but we're going to check a little bit about that more in detail uh, however I think uh, I think I'll actually going to make a uh, our ship out of this thing because I feel like it um, so we're going to build for that instead so now then um, if you're making light things you'll need to um, have it be decently light of course and uh, these blocks lightweight alloy are um, they, they, they are light but a little bit expensive um, so we're gonna use lightweight armor for the kind of main layer of armor. Now, so you could do two different things. You could either have the more expensive type of armor um, inside, the inside layer like I have, then the outer armor gets a 25% bonus from whatever we put here. Um, and that's nice and all. You could also have the most strong armor behind, uh, no, uh, in front instead of behind. So you kind of have the stronger armor outside and then it will deflect a lot more shots. And then your ship will get a little bonus from the armor you'll have um, behind it, basically. So if I uh, instead do the reverse array around, let's say I have wood on the inside and uh, alloy on the outside, then this gets a little bonus here. Um, yeah, from, from the wood. But I could also put a wood on the outside and this would make it so that um, the wood takes most of the damage and it will be easily to you know, destroy but it will also soak up a lot of that damage. So um, it's, you know, easier to repair. So that's one thing too. Right, so now I will just wanna show you some different kind of how the armor a little bit works now. As I said, um, we can only layer them like one layer um, behind. So we can only have two layer armor uh, we can only back up an armor with one layer behind it. If you back it up with more layers, you will not get an armor class bonus. Um, you will, of course, get more layers, which is good for survivability, but, you know, that's how it is. Yeah, well, anyways, let's make a little test here. Let's have two layers here. 
one layer here and we can have instead wood on layer backed up here and we can have wood in front of it kind of like that and just to check we could have two layers of wood okay we're just gonna drop this down here and I'm going to basically show you a little bit how it works we can probably freeze the grain too so you can go into settings here and uh, where is it oh options under no <laughs> so Zeet, Zeet is the character um, setup menu. I totally forgot that right now because I don't go here very often. Here anyways, you can get this debug health and armor class, put this into your inventory. Um, and we can now change to it, block HP. And I showed you into like the original tutorial, it's pretty useful. Here you can see the armor class is um, 35 35 because of course the blocks you'll get armor class from they have to be connecting you know? they have to connect actually and this is kind of uh, 45 dependent on like the angle so of course if you have a higher angle it's more because you'll get uh, um, you'll get a bonus from the block that's kind of diagonally connected to it and here if we look at this one so one layer of wood like this has an armor class of 8 and if we go in here oops, you can see that it's an armor of 8 and this one has 9.6 because of course it gets a 25% bonus from the wood block behind it and it doesn't matter we have alloy behind those two blocks because it's only the first block behind the block you're looking at that actually counts. Uh, and here, if you're looking at this one, it has an armor class of 36.6 because it's backed up by the wood. So here we have um, 15 because it's uh, wood backed up by this. So 15. And this instead has 36.6. It's much higher armor class, but on the other hand, if we break through this armor, then we only have this super weak armor to protect it. So I'd put the weakest armor um, closest to the outside still. That's um, like how we told it in the like original armor tutorial. And you can take a look at that if you want to have some more details um, or in depth. It's a little bit more theoretical and a little bit more in depth basically. But uh, you can't stack eight layers, of or la eight layers of armor anymore. It's only two now. And that's ma mainly the big change that has changed and of course some values of armor class has changed now this is 42 because we have two layers of uh, alloy and this is also 42 because we can't count this behind there now um, I think this is kind of new but I'm not totally sure um, if it is actually new let's take a little look at it so if we have like that oh and by the way Two layers of stacked heavy armor is the heaviest uh, like surface you can have. Anyways, I just want to check like this because before I think I may be wrong here, but I think it was so that you needed to have two actual layers. But now we don't count. It doesn't have to be two separate block of layers. It can be that the block is just thicker that way. So, if you look here, uh, this wooden block, uh, two meter wooden block with the outside towards the, um, you know, uh, it's stacked like this towards us. Then we'll actually get the armor class bonus from the, uh, like, block behind it. Even though this is not a separate block, it's a separate square meter and this uh, gives us the armor class bonus because you can see these are two independent separate layers and this is only one block or it's only one beam and the beam is facing us so they are equally thick uh, but they have the same armor class because um, it kind of gets armor from itself it only counts uh, square meters behind certain block so that's pretty neat as same as this one, of course, 
42, 42, and 72 is the maximum you can have. You can see if we look at here, it's only, not only, it's 60. And if you look at here, it's 72 because it's backed up by, you know, itself. Yeah, so that's, uh, that's pretty neat. Let us go and check a little bit on, uh, actually we can just remove a little block like this. Let's check what happens if we have blocks that are not like full blocks that are e uh, that are not as equally thick because I wonder if this has changed as well or not. And just one there for reference. Okay. So here we have our block HP. Okay, so it seems that it gets the full armor class bonus, even though the block is thinner this way, it does give us the full um, armor class bonus. Well, that's pretty neat. Um, and of course, things can change, but I just asked a little bit um, the devs there and see if this these changes will remain and it seems like these changes are pretty uh, pretty decided but that can of course change so I'm not saying any names <laughs> if it would change you know but yeah anyways this is um, you can see they have different buoyancy because this one is smaller and of course smaller half block like this has uh, less health and stuff, but they have the same armor class, so that's pretty neat to know. Right then, so we are going to uh, fill up our little hull here and we're going to add a citadel. Now my citadel will be in the inside here and I think that uh, I'll only use the citadel to host the uh, AI, the AI compartment. And we're going to make a citadel out of heavy armor. We're going to try and make this uh, close to the mass center. Actually, we should set up some uh, symmetry plane there. Okay, so I think we will make, we'll actually make a pretty large citadel. We'll host the AI in here as well as some main materials and stuff like that. Right, and we'll not, we'll not, we'll line it with heavy armor on the bottom, but I think on the top will suffice with backing it up with, let's see, is it heavier than stone? Oh, no, it's uh, heavier than metal, it's as heavy as stone, so I think we'll use stone. Because the thing is with stone that it uh, doesn't transmit the EMP surges in the same uh, way that metal does. So we can safely put our AI on here without hurting ourselves very much, you know. Basically like that. So now we have a citadel inside here. Um, and that's pretty nice. Now there is one thing uh, which I can see which is a problem here already. Uh, with our setup, and that is if someone wants to use Hesh Shell, high explosive, uh, high explosive squash heads, and high explosive squash heads. These are real evil shells that basically uh, use your own armor against you. They make an explosions on the surface of the armor, and it spits a splitter inside of your uh, compartment. And the stronger the armor is, the worse the splitter will be. So let's say a hash shell hits this beam here, bam, and it penetrates all the way in and the fragments spawned from this heavy armor will just kill the AI. So we'll need to make a little stop to this. To make a little stop to this, um, applique panels uh, or era works fine too. Uh, also having just an air gap works fine too, but we're just going to have it like that. Applique panels like that and we can put um, alloy in a layer outside of it just like that pretty nice 
So that is basically our main shape of the armor. We'll put our AI in here and we'll put some important other parts we'll really don't want to lose in there as well. Um, but that's basically this little citadel is basically where we'll have our, all our valuable things. And this outer layer of the hull is, of course, we want to protect our parts, but we don't want to waste too much armor on protect parts that we can lose. Like, let's face it, you'll lose weapons, you'll lose turrets, you'll lose stuff when you do battles. So, you know, we can afford to lose them. So we are going to protect them, but not too much. So we'll have our little kind of backbone armor here. And as you can see, we kind of have this... Um, these blocks should probably be connected with a fall block here, like that. But I want to save some materials. Um, so it's just that, you know, if uh, we blow up perhaps like certain blocks, uh, a lot of chunks will fly off when it's not connected. And that's kind of a little bit the problem here. Um, now, we are going to do like this actually, we are going to put truss blocks inside of this to at least provide some kind of connection between these panels without adding much weight because you can see the weight of these is three, they have some health and they will hold this together. That's basically the only reason why we put them here. And we might remove these blocks later as well if they come, uh, you know, if they block our systems from being inserted. So we're just gonna add some temporary truss blocks here. And this is of course great for a lightweight design, but, but if you're making a, like a naval only ship, then probably don't wanna use something like this here. But truss blocks is, uh, it's cool for connecting internal parts. Um, now they, they have some armor, they have some health now. They're, they're pretty nice, but um, it's a skeletal frame, so it won't really um, protect you very well. Like if you see here. Yeah. So this is armor class 30. I, but since it's kind of skeletal, um, the drag is very little and stuff like that, so you can have them externally. But um, yeah, they don't stack up and it, it's... This is not armor, it's probably what I'm going it's probably what I want to say. Okay. Anyways, I wanna do a little experiment here. Will Oh lords. You can see they get damaged pretty easily, just like that. But you know, if the upper blocks are there. It's just there to kind of hold it together. I just wanted to see that will shots actually go through it and um, shots didn't go through it. Now it feels like this, these values don't really, 100 health. Maybe, mm, yeah, okay, 100 health, 300 health, okay. Anyways. So um, I want to have a kind of uh, throw away, use up and throw away cover to this ship. So we are going to coat this thing in uh, wood. Now wood is heavier than alloy. And we're just gonna make a little check here actually. Let's see here. Weight five, weight 10. It's twice as heavy, much less good, but it's very cheap. So when we damage this, it's also easier to kind of replace it. Uh, but uh, just having a simple layer of, uh, you know, um, of wood panels or on the sideways and stuff like that, I think it will be a little bit too flimsy. So we're going to add some corners here to further back up uh, the structure a little bit here. All right, now I think we'll not I'm not bothered with putting in there, but somewhere like this. So we have a little bit more weight behind it. And then we can add up uh, a little coating for this thing. And I can, you know, put up the coating and I'll be back in a few sec. Now there we have coated this little ship here. Pretty beautiful. 
And now you can see I added extra armor to the sides here. And this is actually just because I want this face of the wood. So if you desperately want this surface of the wood like I do, you can make, uh, you can use these two meter beams and just stack them up like this. And you'll get this effect. Pretty nice, I think it's very lovely. Also, um, you'll get the armor class bonus. So it will be like two layers of wood. Um, and of course, you won't get, you know, because if we look here, let's just see it. If you look at this one with our uh, block HP, we said our armor class is 9.6, but here it's 15. Most places, except here, because we have two layers of wood there, but you know. So this is uh, pretty sturdy armor. Shots will bounce off this. Light shots, that is. Very light shots will bounce off this. But maybe not this. It's, you know, it's a difference. But of course, it uh, soaks up a lot of health. And <sighs> the aesthetics is important too. So, uh, you know. Anyways, um, it's a thicker too. So it will make the explosion a little bit further away from the hull, which will keep it more intact. So that's also true. Like, if, if the shot explodes here, it's further away from the main hull behind here, so it's better to have this, but um, to deflect shots, this part is better. Anyways, I wanted to show you some special armor here, because just in, fright, in front of our citadel, uh, we really don't want to uh, get, you know, shot at. Now, we can use this... Uh, um, applique armor and you can see the applique armor has some like armor class of 50 so you'll have to have pretty sturdy shots to like not bounce off this um, but it's easy to destroy it. it it doesn't have too much health um, but it's also you know it's kind of cheap too but it's kind of disposable and uh, yeah however uh, what I wanted to say was that this armor class doesn't stack you know uh, these are like air Having this in here is like an air gap, as I told you before. Um, it's just there to kind of suck up potential uh, splitter from these parts here. Uh, however, what we want to do is we want to have a special little arm here. I'm just going to show you that. We have something called ERA, Explosive Reactor Armor. So if someone would put a heat shell here that could potentially penetrate through if it's like super powerful, we could stop it dead in its track with era armor like era armor it's like five materials per block so i don't know if that's considered expensive but it's a little bit more expensive than the other armors we have here um but it will completely just cancel uh, heat shells and we can slowly replace these pieces uh, as we lose them so um they will explode when something hits them but they will also destroy the shell so I'll just put it here as a protective little layer just for the core of the ship. And you may do that or may not do that. Right, so this is basically our little uh, main hull completed. We also have some other things we can go through. And that is some people don't want their ammunition to blow up on your entire ship. And if there is no way you can kind of place the ammo in a place where it can't blow up, you can place the ammo inside a compartment of like heavy armor. Basically protect it from fire. But uh, I wanna keep this little low weight, so I'm not going to have this solution here. <clears throat> uh, we are, however, going to just try a little bit and see, because before I think it was one, two, so one, two, three, four, something like that. Four blocks in between them so that it wouldn't chain react. And we can just do another little test over here if we have them like three blocks apart like that. All right, so um, let's see if these chain react. Apparently, they chain react nowadays, uh, even though they're four block apart. Right. So let's see if we put it here. Okay, let's let's have one, two, three, four, five, six blocks apart. Will they chain react? 
it. All right. The explosive radius of these are much higher than they used to be. And you can see they're pretty, they're pretty deadly. This is just like two boxes. All right, let's see if we uh, can pack them up here. We'll need to do some way so they do not chain react because chain reactions, mm-mm. Right, so let's try and put a metal shield in between of them. All right, so a metal shield does protect them from, from chain reacting, that's good to know. Let's see if a single block protects them from chain reacting. Yes, it does. All right, good, good. Now we'll know uh, in this current uh, version of From the Depth, <clears throat> you can space them out with one layer of uh, <clears throat> metal. And we should be able to do a, a little bit of explosion resistant uh, compartment here. So let's, let's just try and do a little, little template thing here. Let's see if this works. If we'll kind of have a checkerboard pattern like this. And you all might think this is adding unnecessary weight, but I'm telling you, this, <coughs> this is worth your invested resources. Now, we don't know how much ammo we need, so we're going to wait a little bit with making the final ammo magazine, because of course, uh, material and ammo is the same now. Uh, yeah. And we just want to uh, have not more than necessary. Now, this is... <laughs> if we make this a naval ship, it will be a very funny naval ship. Anyways. A beautiful. Uh, only that uh, only that one was affected. Okay. This is very beautiful. This is very beautiful. So, uh, a new discovery. This is our new type of ammo magazine. We'll have this type of ammo magazine. Space with one block just, you know, like this. So they won't chain react. Because if you remove these blocks in between, you'll have a huge explosion. So, uh, for naval ships, my normal recommendation would to make a little um, armored metal armored keel and place the ammo in this keel and space them out with uh, metal like this. If you can't have them on the keel, because uh, we're probably gonna get a lot of firepower from below on this airship, uh, we can instead put it in a little magazine and this magazine will be like this and it will have spaced out the ammo barrels with metal. If it would change so that the metal will not stop it from chain react, we'll just exchange this with heavy armor and that's a well worth investment. And don't put all of your ammo in a big magazine because, um, you know, they say that's how the Yamamoto died, um, the, battle, the Japanese battleship, because, you know, central ammo magazines. I don't know if, it's that, if that's true, but whatever. Right, so we have our AI in here, we have some other important parts, we have some material storage, we want to keep some material storage in here, and probably some repair bots, um, and then we'll have the weapons and the propulsion and stuff like on other places. So, um, another thing we can have on hulls here, of course we'll need to place this kind of in the end of our building session here, but uh, we have metal portholes, and the metal portholes offer some nice armor while they are not obstructing the line of sight for some AI detection blocks. Like 360 camera, no this is not connected, but if it was it would be able to see fine. So um, use some of these portholes, uh, portholes, metal portholes, and if you really need to save weight, use the uh, alloy portholes to protect cameras and the like. Radars can't be protected like that, but you can place radars in a little tube. So you can basically do a, a tube like this and put a radar in here. I can show you just quickly. Now, this is not an AI tutorial. I already made this uh, a few days ago, so do check that out. But um, yeah, just wanted to tell you that a little bit quickly. Now, if there is there anything else we have forgotten? Yes, there is. Um, 
turrets. You'll need to arm your turrets, and when you have turrets, you should absolutely um, have armored turret wells because turrets explain, uh, contain a lot of explosive equipment. Like you can go to uh, the advanced cannons, and here we actually have templates. So these templates, the alloy represent the turret, and the uh, uh, metal represent the uh, turret well. And this configuration will make the turret inside here, the alloy, be able to spin around freely while the turret well is protecting it. Now you can see these ones are a little bit too big, uh, but there is also a smaller one I'm just uh, wanting to show you. Because if you have a smaller ship like this one, the turret well can actually be a lot smaller. Uh, if we have a small ship like this, we can have a turret well out of 3x3. Three three. So we'll probably replace this truss box here with some alloy, like this. Beautiful. Oh no, <laughs> now I made it too small. Anyways, uh, so if you have a 3x3 three three little well, like this, perfect, and we'll just add a couple of these here and here. So this 3x3 three three little well will allow a turret to live inside of it without it actually colliding to the sides. Uh, so, as I said, turrets contain a lot of explosive materials and you'll want to kind of keep them uh, protected. Right, so we're going to spawn a turret. Now, I don't remember how high this is. Okay, we'll just press P so we can see a little bit better than we can't. Okay, we'll do like this. Oh, it fits perfectly! So here we can see this is kind of, that's where we can have it. So if we just uh, go out of build mode and we go towards this thing, we can see because this is a 3x3 three three solution, we can use this turret beautifully. If it will shoot. Packing payload. Oh god, it's a slow packing time. But it kind of proves the point here. You can have a turret in turret wells and they can be like protected like that. Very nice. We we'll just need a 3x3 three three little uh, space or otherwise if you want bigger turrets you can use the templates here. Uh, because big squares doesn't work for like bigger turret. So, no. Alright. I think that covers like most of the hull tutorial here. Now there is one thing more. When you make ships, some people try to skip out on armor their decks and just use a single layer of like reinforced decking or something like that. Uh, but no. You will want to armor your decks as much as the side of your ships for most ships because otherwise um, that's how you die. And uh, when you build ships, as well as making them aerodynamic, having slopes will of course make them deflect shots more easily. So for this ship, of course, we'll place that a little bit later, we can have sloped blocks in the top like here. But uh, to save a little bit on the weight and not needing to do a too uh, thick top, we will do this by lightweight alloy like this and we'll have some kind of two layer solution there. We will armor it less on the top and more on the bottom because I think we'll get more shots from below but we'll at least have the same armor on the sides as the bottoms probably more and we'll fit in some turrets there so you'll know. Um, we're gonna have a lot of turret wells and stuff like that and missiles and different systems on it but that's for I don't know another video or a later time because I don't know. Let's see here. Can I remove the golem easily? Yes, thank you. So um, I suppose that is basically that. That's probably how to make a hull in a pretty nice way. So. Uh, yeah, I suppose that uh, we can 
see each other in a future video if you did like this yeah well if you did please leave a like and i'll see you then and uh, hope this little how tutorial was useful for you so uh, yep yeah, like the video and subscribe and i'll see you next time liking the video helps a lot please do anyways have a great one and before i go there is one more thing i almost forgot to uh, tell you oh my god uh, and, and that is um there are something called emp and when you built your kind of hull finished put emp surges close to metal things at the sides of the ship so that if an emp surge comes uh, the EMP surges has the opportunity to suck up this power. And do not play EMP surges too close to your AI or uh, detection equipment because they might uh, draw attention, they might draw the EMP surges towards themselves. Now I think we can actually end this video. So if you liked it, please leave a like and uh, do subscribe for future videos. This is your host, Jim Odessum, signing out. See you. Bye-bye.